hello again and welcome to another edition of Shed Talk. Um, has been a, a while since we updated on the breeding cages, so that's what we're going to do um, in this particular video. Um, before we do that, though, we will have a very quick look at um, the, some new pairings, some possible new pairings that I'm thinking about, um, and then we'll discuss a little bit about what they look like and. Um, my my thoughts, I suppose. Please do let me have uh, your comments, as always, about um, uh, my the way I've looked at them and your own views on them. And don't forget, as always, if you do enjoy um, the uh, videos, don't forget to hit the like button and do uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, you may notice that there is a slight difference in terms of the um, watermark on this particular video. Um, I just thought. Uh, given what's currently going on in the world at this moment, um, I couldn't just do nothing at all in terms of my videos. And of course, my thoughts and prayers are with all those people who are currently suffering um, in Ukraine. Uh, but enough of that. Let's get on with what this video is all about, which of course is about the birds and the um, shed. So let's now go over and have a look at some of those possible new pairings. So here we are. This is the first possible pairing that, I, that we're going to look at. The bird on the left is the um, yellow face dominant by grey that we looked at in the last video. You might remember we were going to try and find him a partner. That's the bird that did um, best for me at the Oxford 1910 um, stock show uh, early on or the end of or beginning of February. Um, the bird on the right is a dark green. She sort of complements him in terms of his lack of spots and she's got quite nice um, big bold spots and um, fairly dark um, markings which should help a little bit. Um, my only real concern about this particular bird is that she in the past had a bit of a history of um, feather plucking the youngsters so um, I do need to be really careful if I am going to use this bird. I'm still wondering at the moment about this particular pair. Um, if I did, I would be looking to, I don't know, perhaps um, foster the chicks out or maybe find some other means of preventing her from um, feather plucking. So this would be the first possible hen for this um, cockbird that we've um, identified as being next in the breeding cages. Still not really sure about this one, so um, yeah. Uh, we'll have a look at another possible pairing for him. So here's the second option for uh, this uh, yellow faced dominant pied. Um, another pied uh, bird. Um, this hen um, actually um, looks much better in the stock cage than she does in a show cage. When she gets in the show cage she tightens up like this and then has this horrible wing carriage and the hinged tail and I know I've spoken about the hinged tail and I expect there's lots of people shouting now at the video saying don't use it don't use it um, it's a real shame that it is does have such a bad carriage because as you can see from um, when it does show its face it's actually not a bad looking bird and has a really nice um, face on it it's got big spots that would help um, with this cock bird um, and I know there are other people now who are probably saying never put dominant pied to dominant pied. Um, so my expectation is that I won't use this hen with this cock bird, but I may want to use this hen at some stage. So I'm going to leave him in the her in the stock cage, at least um, just to see if I can find something that would suit her, something that has a real nice style about about it. Uh, so, once again, there we go, That's a, that was the second option for him, but I'm very doubtful whether I'm going to use this bird uh, with him. If anything, their heads are too much alike. Um, I'm not sure she offers him anything, really, other than the spots. And finally then, let's look at the last option for this uh, cockbird. And it's this yellow face grey hen here. Um, don't be um, put off by the fact that the 
yellow faced grey looks quite a bit smaller. She's actually sat right at the very back of the show cage and the cockbird sat right at the very front. So um, she's actually not that much smaller than um, he is. Uh, as you can see from this uh, yellow faced grey, got a reasonable style about the bird. Um, no sign of any um, hinged tail. Um, she has she is a very distant relative to the cockbird in that they share a great grandfather. She has quite a nice face on her. If anything, I she probably could do with a bit more spot to help him, but the spots aren't that bad. Um, she got um, full set and they are reasonably dark, so they might add. She has um, quite a wide um, face, reasonable side mar size mask. Um, the only other thing I'm a little bit worried about is she's only just turned 10 months, so she might be a little bit young still, but um, thoughts on that. I do normally like to leave them a little bit longer, but I know some people will pair up at eight months. So, thoughts. At the end of the day, I think this is probably going to be the best option for this cockbird, given my comments on all the others. So, um, this will therefore become my new um, cage one, I believe. Um, and we'll have a look at them when I come to do the full roundup of all of the breeding cages. So there you go. I think this is most likely going to be the A new pair. So I've been looked at what we were going to pair up to the uh, dominant pied, yellow faced dominant pied. We're going to have a look at another cockbird that I want to get in the show cage and it's this um, opaline uh, sky blue uh, cockbird on the right as you look at them here. Um, once again a reasonably clean um, opaline um, and I've been looking to try and get this bird into a breeding cage for a while now. Um, so first of all then let's have a look see about this uh, well the first option was this um, dominant pied hen that we've already looked at. She's showing a little bit better here actually and not showing quite the problem in the um, cat wing carriage and the hinge tail although you can still see it's there a little bit. Um, so this was the first option for him. Um, she's quite big so she would certainly add a bit of size across the shoulder to this bird that he is lacking just a wee bit. Um, but once again I'm really worried about um, perpetuating the fault of the hinged tail um, that this hen has um, and continues to show. So still wondering about um, this pair. We'll have to wait and see. I do have another option for this um, cockbird that we will also take a look at and I will then need to make a decision as to um, which of the hens we will put to him. So once again let me have your thoughts on this um, possible pairing. So let's move on to this final option then for the second pair. Uh, once again, you're aware of this um, bird on the left, the um, dark green bird. I think actually, um, in terms of her, the way she um, complements him, this one might be a little bit better. They've both got quite nice um, dark uh, spots. She's got quite a henny looking head, so, and is also quite wide. Um, a reasonable um, style about her, as I said before nice and wide across the um, chest and the shoulders. So only problem as always with this particular bird is the feather plucking which we've already um, been through on a um, couple of occasions uh, or we've already spoken about a couple of times already now so um, I won't repeat that. So yes I'm just wondering I think this might be the better option in comparison with the um, dominant pied. Let me know your thoughts as always, however you think this one or what they, you think about this pairing.
So what does that now mean in terms of the breeding cages, uh, particularly in terms of those birds that were already in the breeding cages and where they've got in terms of um, their um, eggs and whether they've laid any and however any of those are full, but also those birds that we've uh, just looked at and that we've just put in. So what I will do now is I'll take you around each of the breeding cages in terms starting at cage one and moving through to cage six and very quickly talk about uh, what's in there and how they're getting on. So as I say then we'll start at um, cage one and this is the um, pair that we've just looked at. So the bird that was um, did best for me at Oxford 1910, the uh, dominant pied, and we've paired it up to the um, grey, yellow faced grey hen. And at the moment, as you can probably tell, the box is still turned around. They've only just gone in there. Uh, so um, I'm giving them a chance just to settle in, uh, let the hen and the cock bird get to know each other. Um, and I'll give it a couple of days and then I will turn or fill the nest box with um, bedding and turn it round to allow the hen some access to it. Um, there's not been any squabbling in the cage which is always a good start with a with a new pen but they're not showing that much affection to each other. The cock bird is, is bouncing a little bit so he's certainly chatting to um, all the other birds in the shed um, which is a reasonable sign. Uh, the hen however um, you know isn't really showing much interest in him but it's early days you know we're on day one of this pair being paired up. So let's move on then and talk about um, cage two. So let's now consider cage two. You may remember that this is a pair that's been down for a little while. It's the um, a grey hen and a light green cockbird. Um, the the hen went went took an interest in the nest box almost immediately. You may remember that and um, started to clear it out. Um, I've seen the cockbird and the hen bird paying a lot of interest to each other. I've even seen the, the cockbird um, treading the hen. However, it's been three weeks and there are no eggs. Um, I don't know whether the problem is that the um, hen just isn't in the right condition um, or, uh, or, or what it is, but she's certainly not laying. She has been a proven hen before, so she has laid for me before, so, so I don't think it's that. I've also not seen um, any signs of any broken eggs so I'm not sure whether the, so I don't think the eggs are being destroyed either um, but who knows um, it could it could of course still be that um, oh, somebody asked uh, recently how long I'd leave them down for and it really does depend on the um, or leave them down with them out producing any eggs and it really for me it does depend on what they look like they're doing if it looks as if they're they're very keen keen to get on I'll give them a bit longer um, but if, if they are hen showing no interest in the nest box and no interest in the cockbird, uh, then I would give them less time. Um, these have now had three weeks. There are no eggs. I'm going to give them one more week. If they haven't started laying this week or the hen hasn't laid this week, then this pair will be split. Um, I think what I will do is give this cockbird a chance with another hen because I wouldn't mind getting something off this cockbird. Um, I do quite like him. Um, so I probably will give him another hen if... Uh, I do have to split them. So that is uh, cage two. A little bit disappointed that they haven't started laying, but we, as I say, we will give them one more week. And now cage three. Um, this pair I um, have now split. Remember, this was the um, the uh, blue, the blue we had a look at earlier when we were looking at um, the uh, young birds in the last video. The very nice um, light blue um, cockbird. Uh, that I've got probably the best bird um, currently in my shed, I, I would guess, um, and a grey-green um, hen. Uh, they um, had, a, had a reasonable first round, um, and we've looked at some of the chicks from that that, um, uh, that they had in the first round. Laid in the second round, there were three full eggs, um, of which one hatched, and was doing really well. The chick was doing very, very well. I had just rung, rung the chick, um, and then unfortunately we had those two storms in a row and I can only assume it was those two storms because overnight the hen abandoned the nest um, and when I came in in the morning uh, the chick um, was cold and dead. I did hold it in my hand to see if it would, uh, the warmth from my hand would revive it but it was, it was definitely dead. Um, I, like I say I can only assume that it was the storm um, and that 
the chick uh, either got too cold and died from the cold or that the hen just had stopped feeding the, the chick. Um, there was no sign of injury on the youngster. Really disappointed um, with that. However, I have now split this pair up. Um, I'm going to give both the cockbird and the hen a rest. My intention is just to give the cockbird probably a month, two months maximum, um, and then pop him back in to give him one round with uh, another hen, because um, I wouldn't mind getting some more of him before I close my breeding season down, which I normally do around June or July time. So um, that's my plan here. Uh, don't know what I'm going to put in this ca this this cage yet, um, now. It's currently empty, so there's nothing in there. Um, I'm, I keep looking at the grey um, hen that we looked at that I said I wouldn't I didn't really want to use because of its light hook tail. Um, when it's in the um, the uh, stock cage, it sits perfectly well, and there's no sign of that hook tail. So I like I say, I'm in an hour about whether to put her in or whether to find another hen out of the flight. Um, and and see whether I might want to pair it to that. Um, I'll have to have a look at what I've got in there in terms of the cockbird if I do put that grey in um, because I want to make sure it's a bird that shows no no sign at all of any hinge tail and I will probably check the background of the bird to see make sure there's no history of any hinge tail in the background. So cage three is currently empty as I say. So moving on then to cage uh, four. This is the cage that had um, the surviving outcross um, cockbird uh, in it um, and this has been a real success for me. Um, so it's sort of a little bit I suppose of a, of a bounce back um, from losing the, the main cockbird. So this um, outcross cockbird that I um, paired up, remember it had a previous partner that we that it didn't seem to be bonding with, or at least the hen didn't seem to want to to go to nest. So um, we swapped that round. Um, this bird has now, or this pair, has now laid eight eggs, of which the first six of those are definitely full. Uh, not too sure about the last two. I need to check those over the next uh, couple of days. So uh, six full eggs from this outcross which is really, really good news from my point of view. Um, so what am I going to do now with those, if all these eight eggs are full? Clearly I wouldn't want that particular pair to, to bring all of those up. So my plan is, is that um, if the first four hatch, is I will remove the remaining eggs into cage five. Now cage five, um, which we'll talk about briefly now then, um, Again, was a newish pair. It was a, a cockbird that I previously paired up that I split after one round, left him in there with a new hen. Um, that hen uh, laid two eggs. Both those eggs uh, were clear. There's then been a bit of a gap after those first two eggs, um, and she's now started laying again, or appears to have started laying again. Um, not sure. So as it's literally just started laying again in that nest box, I don't know whether that any of those eggs are full. But my plan would be that um, to uh, offset the, at least the first two eggs with some youngsters from um, the uh, full eggs in uh, cage four. So that is cage four and cage five really. Like I say, cage five, um, a little bit disappointed that the first two eggs were clear, but we'll see whether the next, um, actually started to lay again, whether those eggs may actually um, be a bit more, more useful and a bit more successful. So that's cage four and cage five. Finally then cage uh, six. Uh, this pair, I split the pair in cage six, you may remember. Um, and again, we've got a new pair in there. Uh, this new pair is indeed the um, uh, opaline cockbird with a um, darkish green or dark green um, hen. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier that the dark green hen does have a little bit of history of feather plucking so um, I really need to watch this pair but I've got nothing else that's going to be of any use to put in there so I think my plan will be is is to see if I can foster the the youngsters out um, that's that's the hope anyway and we'll have to wait and see alternatively um, as they hatch I will have to cover them with um, some cream that um, 
many people have recommended to me that will actually stop um, feather plucking. So um, it's just normal Vaseline or, or Sudochrome, that type of cream that I'll be using. So that's an update on all of the breeding cages then. So uh, like I say, you know, lots of changes in there, but um, a little bit of a bounce back, particularly with cage four. You know, let's, let's touch wood then that we get a few out of, out of that pair. So there we go. That's all of the breeding cages. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, that um, quick run round of the uh, various breeding cages and the new pairings. Like I say, a little bit of um, hope there with um, cage four and the birds that are um, and that particular pair that have now got eight eggs and six full ones. So let's hope that we get at least, you know, half of those um, onto the perch. That would be a real success for me. Um, like I say, um, that is all we've got time for. Please do don't forget to comment if you uh, wish to and do subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Um, but until the next video to everybody out there, please, please do stay safe and enjoy your birds.